What's up guys, this is Josh here from Blender Bros. And in this video, I wanna show you a really, really powerful hard surface modeling add-on. Let's go. This add-on is called Mira Tools. I'm gonna to link it in the description. There's gonna be a GitHub link. Go to that link. I'm gonna show you on the screen how to do it. Go to the link in the description. It's gonna take you to a GitHub website. Download the zip file for Mira Tools. Now what you want to do with the zip file is you want to extract the contents inside. You want to navigate to the Blender version because it has stuff for Houdini and other software. Go to the file that is titled 2.8. I know it's an old version, but it's still going to work for 4 and beyond. So click on that 2.8 version, find the Mira Tools file, zip that file, and then drag and drop it into Blender, just like I'm showing you on the screen here. Now, once you do that, I'm going to kind of show you what's going to happen. So if you add in a mesh, let's say we add in the monkey here, you're going to see if we go into, let me just subdivide this once. If we go into edit mode and you go to the end panel, you're going to have this little mirror option right here. This is the mirror tools um, tool set, basically. Now, I'll be honest, most of these I do not use in my workflow at all because they're not particularly useful. But there is one that you're going to find very, very useful in all sorts of different situations. Let's say, for example, you know, it might actually be easier on a sphere. Let's say I had a sphere. All right. And let's say the sphere had a bunch of disruption going on. Let's say all these vertices were, you know, we still have quads, but let's say the vertices were all mismatched. Now we have some nasty shading. Well, you might be thinking, okay, well, I could use the loop tools feature and then relax that. And that's going to work, but not as well as we want it to. So instead, what you can actually do is use the mirror tools C stretch feature. Now, by default, I believe the points number is set to five, and I find that to be a good amount as well. So if you set this to five and then you click on the curve stretch feature right here, and then you click on the mesh literally anywhere, what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a blue curve basically. And whenever you select the points on this curve, you can reposition more or less the location of those vertices. You can almost think of this as a trend line. Imagine you have a graph and a graph is going in a certain direction and you wanna see the trend. This is exactly the same thing except for topology on a 3D mesh. So you can kind of see how if I kind of match this blue line with the vertices, it's, you know, one direction. So it's trending in the same direction. But, you know, if these are wildly in you know different locations, you can see it's more or less creating a trend based on that blue line. So this really allows you to kind of move the vertices in, in the right pattern and the right formation that you want them. I'll give you another example here. Let's say I had... Let me just add in a cube and then I'm just going to invert the selection, delete all the vertices. And let's say I had, I was trying to draw like a handle, for example. This is like a very bad handle, obviously. But the point I'm trying to show you here is, you know, say we're trying to sketch this out, but it's almost too blocky, right? This is another example where you could actually use the C stretch feature here. So all I would do is I'll go to curve stretch. I would click on the mesh and now once again, I can kind of use this to kind of bend the vertices so they're more you know smooth and consistent. So I can kind of bend this over here. I can bend this up here. I can bend it in this direction. Now obviously there's gonna be a limitation based on the poly count, but you know the more vertices you have here, if I subdivide this a bit more, you know, if I subdivide this a couple times, it's pretty blocky. But that's where, again, you have a lot of vertices, but you have a few different points on this curve stretch feature to kind of, you know, move this into the right location. So basically, the more geometry you have, the more control you're going to have with this curve here in Mirror Tools. And you can see just how quick, you know, I got that result. And I'll give you one more good example here. Let's say I had, you know, this monkey and I kind of moved some of these uh, vertices kind of outside, you know, out of the way, kind of like this. If I wanted to kind of, you know, reposition them in a much better formation, again, go to the curve stretch feature, 
five is usually more than enough, go in here and just reposition the curves, right? You can see I don't need to move any vertices at all. All I need to do is use this trend line, so to speak, kind of put them into the right location. It's not gonna be perfect, obviously, but it's gonna be pretty damn close. And you're gonna have just a much quicker way to work and to kind of manipulate uh, the geometry, so to speak. So you can see just how quick I did that. So that is the mirror tools add-on, very quick video. I know there's other settings in there, but honestly, I find them to be completely useless for my workflow. So I only wanna show you a good example of when you would actually use this. So again, I'll link the tool in the description. It is actually a free tool. I don't know if it's being updated still, but I've been using this for years and I don't really mention it too much. If you wanna learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks, just like all of our students have done here, check out our hard surface accelerator program in the description below. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you soon.